Chapter 3 is about safety. Section 2 of Chapter 3 relates Newton's laws to seatbelts. Take a look at this picture. What do you see in the picture? Take a moment to write down your observations in your binder. Now imagine you have to design a seatbelt for a race car that goes 200 miles an hour. Think about how that would be different from the ones in a regular car. In your notebook, in words and pictures, show how you would design your seatbelt for the race car. Let's review Newton's first law. Remember, that's also known as the law of inertia. As we've learned, Newton's law says an object at rest stays at rest, and an object in motion stays in motion, in a straight line with a constant speed unless acted upon by some outside unbalanced force. The three parts of the law. Again, objects at rest stay at rest. Objects in motion stay in motion with an unchanging speed, unchanging direction. They are constant. Although we did not do the investigation as was shown in the chapter, we can still think about and analyze what we would have learned from it. So in the investigation in the chapter, it talked about building a clay model of a person, putting them on a cart, and then letting them go into certain kinds of collisions. As we are observing in class, anytime an object quickly stops, objects within that continue to move just like you've had that experience in cars that you've ridden in. If a car suddenly stops, you continue to move forward because you are already in motion. And part three tells you that any time that an object has um, balanced forces, right, then the object remains at a constant motion when the net force is equal to zero. That's when objects stay at rest, or that's when objects that are in motion stay in motion. When looking at collisions, it's interesting to note that there is not just one single collision involved. In fact, there can be three or more collisions involved. So for example, if a car strikes a tree, that's the first collision. The tree stops the motion of the car. The people in the car who were moving will continue to move until something stops them. That's collision number two. And then within a person, they have body organs like the brain and a heart, which will also continue to move until something stops them. So your skull will stop your brain from moving, your chest, your ribs, sternum will stop your heart from moving. Those are three collisions all that happen within the same accident. We can also think of other types of collisions, for example, in sports. Concussions happen because of collisions in a sport. Concussions can be mild or severe, and multiple concussions can actually end up causing long-term brain damage. Because of the risk of concussions, many sports provide either safety equipment or rules, or both, to protect the players involved. So a concussion results from a collision. Your brain is surrounded by a fluid inside of your skull, so there's some room for your brain to move. A concussion actually causes a change in your brain function, because often um, when the brain moves within the skull, when there's a collision, there can be bruising left behind. There can be blood that leaks out actually into the brain tissue from the tiny vessels within the brain. The brain can swell, which then squeezes the blood vessels even further. And it also can squeeze the nerves, causing nerve damage. So basically when you have a collision of some kind and that causes the brain to move, the front part of the brain 
or the side or the back, whatever part is hit, right, will hit the wall of the skull. And then that will end up causing this area of damage. Because again, objects in motion want to continue in motion. Something stops your skull from moving, but your brain inside your head does not stop moving until it, it hits the inside of your skull. So it's an important thing to remember that collisions don't just involve automobiles or bicycles or motorcycles or other modes of transportation, but collisions can happen within the body as well. Getting back to our discussion of seat belts, seat belts work using a concept called pressure. Pressure is equal to the force on an object distributed over a certain area. A good example of this is the bed of nails trick. Here you see a balloon that is on this bed of nails. Each nail has a pointy end. The balloon, if you just poked it with a pin or one nail, would burst. But when you can distribute the force over a bunch of surfaces or a very large surface area, then that reduces the pressure overall. And the balloon can then survive. Seatbelts work on the same concept. They are wide so that they can distribute the force over a bigger area. Imagine using a seatbelt that was just made of a single wire. It would, the wire would cut right into your body as your body pushed against it. But because here we have a wide seatbelt, it can distribute that pressure and keep you safe. Now it's time to respond and reflect. Make sure that you complete this part of the assignment in your binder. Explain how seat belts are an application of Newton's laws of motion. That is a short answer question. Number two is also a short answer question. Explain the relationship between force, area, and pressure. Think back to what we learned previously about relationships between force, mass, and acceleration, weight, mass, and gravity, velocity, distance, and time. These all have similar types of relationships. And then number three, choose a reflection starter from the reflection starters that you should have in the front of your binder in your resource area and complete a one paragraph reflection from the tutorial. And of course, make sure you remember to buckle up for safety. Thanks.